We know, not only from research in psychology, but simple empirical evidence in the history of science, that the lowest form of evidence that exists in this world is eyewitness testimony. <laughs> Which is scary because that's some of the highest form of evidence in the court of law. But we know from second grade, where's my guy from second grade? Hey, get up to the microphone for a minute. Look, grab the microphone, grab the microphone. In your classes, have you done the famous experiment where you play telephone and you line up all your kids in class and one person starts with a story and then you hear it and you repeat it to the next person and the next person, have you done that in class yet? Yes. You've done that experiment? Because what, hap what happens by the time you get to the last person? and they retell the story. What happens? It's like completely different. It's completely different! <laughs> completely different, okay? Because the conveyance of information was relying on eyewitness testimony, which in that case is ear witness testimony. And so, let's thank you. So, so we know that. So he knows it. He's in second grade. All right, so, actually he should be in 12th grade as we've established. <laughs> so, so now, so now, it wouldn't matter if you saw a flying saucer. In science, even if you have something less controversial than a flying saucer, if you come into my lab and you say, you gotta believe me, I saw it, and you're one of my fellow scientists, I say, I say go, go, back, go home. Go back until you have some other kind of evidence that's not just, you saw it, okay? Because human perception system is rife with all ways of getting it wrong. Okay? But we don't like thinking of ourselves that way. We have high opinions of our human biology when in fact we should not. Okay? So, maybe you did see visitors from another part of the galaxy. I need more than your eyewitness testimony. And in modern times, I need more than your photograph, which Photoshop probably has a UFO button today. Like, <laughs> stick it in. Right? So, on your computer. So, here's, the, here's, the, here's what you do. I'm not saying we haven't been visited, I'm saying the evidence thus far brought forth does not satisfy the standards of evidence that any scientist would require for any other claim that you're gonna walk into the lab with. So here's what I recommend. Here's what I recommend. Next time you're abducted, because I'm ready for this, I'm ready, okay? I get abducted? I'm ready, okay? So you're there, you're like on the slab, because they always do like the sex experiments on you, on the flying saucer. So there you are, and they're poking at you. Here's what you do. You ready? You tell the alien, you're gonna be alien for this, right? So you're poking me, all right? So then I say- Finally, I'm on this side of the equation. Okay, so I say, hey, look over there. And then he looks over there, you quickly like snatch something off the shelf, put it in a pocket, and then lay back. All right? Done. Then you're done, you come back, and say, look what I got! Okay, I like stole the ashtray off the shelf of the flying saucer. And then you bring that to the lab. It's not about eyewitness testimony at that point, because you'll have something of alien manufacture. And anything you pull off of a flying saucer that crossed the galaxy is going to be interesting. Okay? Because even objects within our own culture. I got this a device here. Okay, the iPhone. Ten years ago, they would have resurrected the witch burning laws had you pulled this thing out. Okay? <laughs> and that's in our own culture. Our own culture produced this over a ten year span. So if, you, if there's some uh, technology that crossed the galaxy, that's going to be some serious stuff to look at in the lab. Then we can have the conversation.